Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here with my Nizplum X87 and my KBD Fans KBD67 MK2. Uh, now, I love both of these boards thoroughly, um, but they are entirely different, right? From um, price point to layout to uh, even the, the fundamental type of switches that they use. Um, but I've got an accessory that I think will complete either one of these builds in a very fun way. So, without further ado, let's take a look, shall we? And Trar, Custom MK. So I like that we've got a bare bones box here. Um, not a whole lot going on, just some subtle branding on the side. And I think that's very cool. Uh, let, let the product speak for itself, right? We've got our quick introduction to Custom MK. We've got a website, uh, an email, and even some uh, Reddit info. Very cool. On the back side here, we have a very simple uh, instruction. I like that. Um, you know, from some of these Chinese uh, manufacturers, we're just getting kind of a, a YouTube link or something like that, or, or maybe even no instruction at all. So I appreciate that they've kept it concise, uh, very simple, and just given it to us plain. So thanks, guys. Oops. So what we've got here is a fun little uh, lens cleaning cloth. That's nice. A little branding. Okay, okay. First, we've got our top plate, uh, and so it's a, a nice white FR4 finish with a gorgeous little Enig uh, accent here. I really like this uh, logo, this kind of subtle um, silk screen here. Very fun. Um, but taking a step back, we've got our 2U stabilizers in the zero enter and plus configuration for a traditional numpad, um, and those are PCB mount, so very nice. Um, but otherwise, just kind of a, a good execution of kind of a normal design. I like that. We have another uh, lens cleaning cloth, and I'm, I'm going to get on a little soapbox here. I, I think this is really fun. Um, you could have just maybe a piece of foam or some plastic or, or paper that the user would just kind of throw away as they were unboxing. This is nice. It's a nice little reusable piece um, that the user can benefit from. Uh, but you've also got some uh, branding in there, you know, so I, I really feel like this is a win-win. This is this is really cool. What else is really cool is a second top plate. This is so awesome. Uh, again, it's the, the gorgeous FR4 with the e-ink finish, uh, and I love that subtle branding. Um, but you have a macro pad as well as a numpad uh, top plate. And so this is so cool. You, you don't have to decide whether you're going numpad or macro pad until it's in your hands and you're ready to assemble. Or even, uh, let's say, down the road. You know, you start with the numpad, and then you pick up Photoshop or something, and you're starting to pick these things up, and, and you could really use some shortcuts, some keystrokes. And so convert it over to the macro pad. You can do that. You can disassemble your numpad and convert it to a macro pad. We have the technology. Uh, we've got the power. Um, I'm geeking on this, but... I really do feel like this is a very cool thing that we can have both of these within one kit uh, and really makes it a whole flexible project. I really like that. That's a bunch of fun and I hope we continue to see something like that moving forward. We've got another little uh, lens cleaning cloth. Very cool. So now we've got one for the office, one for home, and uh, I guess one for on the go. Why not? This is a, a little acrylic piece here. Um, doesn't do a whole lot. It just sits between the PCB and the top plate, uh, but it's going to give us a nice, clean, um, finished look when it's all assembled. So, very fun. This piece, however, will do a little bit of heavy lifting. So, um, this is a diffuser. So, this is going to sit beneath the PCB, and the LEDs that are uh, shining beneath uh, give you kind of that aggressive, fast, and furious look. Uh, this diffuser is going to take those, and it's going to kind of clean them up a little bit. Um, particularly for animations, what it's going to do is it's just going to smooth it out. Uh, it's going to be a real seamless transition. Um, and so this is going to be a really nice addition and I think really make those uh, LEDs look nice. And we've got um, our hardware here. I think this is really easy to trivialize. Um, but we've got, looks like some uh, maybe debug pins or something like that and the tools required to assemble it. So. Uh, I appreciate that they've given us not only what we need, but I think, uh, quite frankly, a little bit more. So, thanks, guys. And we have the uh, bottom plate, again, with that gorgeous white FR4 and Enig finish. I love the subdued 
logo here. Very cool. Uh, and then you can also see we've got even countersunk holes. So they really thought about this pretty well. I think it's going to be a nice flush uh, assembly when it's all said and done. I'm really enthused to see how it looks when it's finished. Let me go ahead and take this aside. Oh, our last lens cloth there. And we have the piece de la resistance, the PCB. This is the goods here. So look at that, that's just a gorgeous PCB. I love that. The nice Enig branding here. Oh, so pretty. Uh, but as you can see, we've, we've got the standard MX 5-pin switch support. Um, you could also use the 3-pin, so it's just got the center pin. Um, I like the 5-pin because it adds a little bit more stability via the PCB. Um, and then we've got uh, the 2U stabilizer support that I was mentioning earlier, PCB mount. Uh, for the numpad configuration, uh, and then two rotary encoder support positions. So this is very cool. Uh, I really like these. Generally, I'll use them for like a volume function or maybe a page up, page down, uh, but you can use them for whatever you'd like because we are powered by QMK. And so for those unfamiliar, it's, it's a very cool program that allows you to customize your, uh, your buttons um, and your rotary encoders. Uh, and they're essentially limitless. I mean, you're only limited by the creativity of your programmer here. So QMK is awesome. And the fact that it's implemented here really sets this thing as, as being a, a critical feature. Um, in addition, the last time I spoke with these guys, they were working on VIA compatibility. Uh, and VIA is great. It takes uh, all of the power of QMK and wraps it into a, a nice, friendly user interface built into a GUI uh, that I think is simpler for the, the masses. So... I love QMK, VIA is top notch, I swear by it. Um, those are both critical for something like a macro pad. So uh, very fun that we're working with those. Uh, and of course, we're all interfacing via USB-C. It is 2020 after all, right? Um, but the LEDs, do we have four LEDs on our macro pad? Of course not. Do we have eight LEDs on our macro pad? Of course not. Do we have 12? No, no plebeian 12 LEDs here. There are 13 LEDs on this macro pad. I think it is absolutely ridiculous and I love it. I think it's totally overkill, but I think it's going to look great. So if you're going a static color, you just want to blaze this thing on your desk, it's going to look great. If you want to do a, uh, an animation, I think the resolution is just going to look stellar. It's going to be seamless alongside this diffuser over here. It's just going to look phenomenal. I really like that they've completely blown out the LEDs here. I think it's going to be a bunch of fun, and I'm really enthused to see what it looks like when we're all programmed up and running. Very nice. We're almost done here. So next we've got our mounting. Generally with these things, you'll have 3M bump ponds or, or some kind of afterthought. Not so much with these guys. These are like 1500G military spec uh, rated isolation dampers. I mean, these things are intense, but I think it's pretty fun. And then we have two more little guys for the bottom here. At the end of the day, this thing will not be moving if you don't want it to. So very nice there. So with the, the rotary encoder support here, a lot of times you'll see that as a, a nice to have feature uh, and then they leave it at that. Um, generally kind of a bring your own encoder scenario. Uh, but the guys at Custom MK said, not for us, man. We want to make this a, uh, you know, ready to go configuration. And so they've actually included a very nice industrial encoder here with the clicks, of course, uh, in the kit. And so this is, you'll just plop it down there in whichever position you choose. Bam, and it's going to be ready to go. So I think it's really cool that they could have gotten away not including this, um, but they did. So very fun with that piece, and additionally, a knob. So you've got everything that you need in this kit to get up and running in the macro configuration. The only thing you're missing for the numpad configuration is some stabilizers if you choose to use those, which um, I would probably recommend if you're doing the, the two U keys here. Uh, 
But all in all, I think this is a very fun kit, and I think it's going to play well with, with anything. I think you can dress it up with a nicer keyboard, or uh, dress it down for maybe my little plum configuration. Uh, I think it's going to be a bunch of fun, regardless of what it's paired with, and I'm really looking forward to the build. And so, uh, without further ado, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you guys off as I go throw this thing together. Thanks, take care.